You, do you guys, hey, first of all, I just want to say, you know, my family, my wife Maggie and I are very excited to move uh, our six kids down here to Baton Rouge. We're very grateful to Coach Ogeron for the opportunity for believing in us. And by us, I mean uh, DJ and myself. And I know you're going to talk to him here soon, but uh, DJ is somebody that I had the privilege of working with, with Joe and Carolina, somebody I believe in and I think greatly contributes to the strength of our staff here. And that's something, you know, we are a, a we, not me uh, group over here. Like, we have great strength in our staff. Coach Ogeron talked about Coach Robinson. It was fun, you know, being in our first offensive staff meeting yesterday and looking over there and seeing a legend of a coach there. And Coach Ensminger and I have spent time here. He came up to the office uh, yesterday, and, and he's a guy that Joe Brady talked about, you know, being a great, humble leader. And that's something about this, right? You know, leadership is, a, is an extreme sport that requires courage and humility. And that's something that I think he embodies. I know Coach Ogeron does, Joe Brady does. So those are great people, you know, in addition to many others that have helped me get to where I'm at right now. But I think that those are great examples of people that we want to emulate and that we want our players, therefore, to emulate. And when we do those type of things, we're going to put an exciting brand of football and have exciting brand of, of men you know, out there in the world, not just playing football. So um, again, my family and I are very excited, very proud to be a part of this great organization. And I look forward to, uh, to hearing what you guys uh, want to ask. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, this is Shea Dixon with 24-7 Sports. Um, Coach Joe had talked about wanting to go back to the 2019 offense that uh, Joe Brady and Zinger and Vegas were all a part of. Mm -hmm. um, when you watch film or, or just from what you know, obviously, uh, what jumps out to you about how you would describe that philosophy of his? Well, it's something that I greatly believe in. You know, I, I believe in that passing game. You know, Joe Brady really helped me learn that at a different level. It's similar in some ways to what we ran in Washington when I was with Sean McVay, some similar concepts. But what you see is you see great confidence in those players. Like, they had great preparation. Preparation is what leads to confidence. And I think when you have that, when you have guys that have been in the grassroots of that system, that you're able to teach the players that to an elite level, and then you let their talent take over. It's something that we've got to demand from them every day, starting with the first opportunity we get with them to the very last one. We've got to be extremely demanding with these young men, and we can only do that if we're demanding of ourselves as a staff. And that's where we have a great staff from top down. And that's one of the first thing I did was I reached out to each position coach, each analyst, each GA. These guys are extremely important in this. And for DJ and I, we want to learn from them and try to teach them the way that we've been taught so that we have great strength and power in this staff, so that we sharpen each other, we pass ideas along to each other, we challenge each other, so that when we get to our players, we have a very defined product. We have defined roles, defined responsibility, so that they can play with great confidence because of the preparation that goes into it. Excellent. Um, I think most of us have a, a basic understanding of the spread concepts, but there's certainly different flavors to it. How would you describe what you guys uh, favor, would like to try to implement, and you know some things that we've seen with the Saints and, and you know their offensive attack versus what we see in the SEC with the need for a balanced you know running game sure. within there as well. Uh, how do you how do you marry those two? That's a great uh, question, Michael. What, what do you want to see? What I want to see is our players in the best position to make plays. What are they great at? And that's something we've been spending a lot of time with, with our staff, is going over what schemes fit our players. What's the best way for us to run the ball? What's the best way for attack? Because that's what we want to do. We want to aggressively attack the defense at all fronts. And we want to play the game the way we want to play the game. But we need to know ourselves first. We've got to understand what our players do great and what they don't do. And we obviously want to play to their strengths. So. What we are doing in this system, uh, like the spread system, is we want to define what things our players do at a very high level, and we want to amplify that. We want to adjust it, keep changing it so people can't set their watch to what we're doing and how we're doing it, and we want to involve everybody. And like a question got asked to Coach Ogeron about the running back, and I'll, so I'll just go ahead and talk about that in case you guys want to know. Like if our best personnel grouping has multiple backs on the field, let's do it. We have great playmakers here. 
And that's our job as coaches, and that's my responsibility as the offensive coordinator to make sure that those young men are prepared and that they're on the field to attack the defense. And whatever that looks like, something that we did in Carolina with Joe, we went five wides. We've had two backs on the field, no tight ends. We can run multiple tight end sets. We want this to be an exciting place for our players first. Those are the most important people, the organization, the people that we have here. But then also as we recruit the best players in the country to know that you come here, that we will find a way to get you on the field, we'll prepare you, get you on the field to play with confidence and attack. Whoever we got, the best players we got, you're going to see them on the field. Hey, Brody Miller with The Athletic here. I mean, you've been around several first-time play callers in your career, I guess. Mm -hmm. What kind of lessons and things have you learned from that going into this? I'll tell you what, you learn that it's not even so much about the X's and O's at the beginning. It really isn't. Like the last, uh, the first two days here, we're bleeding into the third day DJ and I have been in here, is all about getting to know our players. Because without trust, there is no relationship. We can't ask these guys to go do these things. We can't be demanding of them in a positive way and really challenge them unless they feel that we believe in them. So it's not just studying the film, that's part of it, but getting face to face with these guys, not even talking football. Like that, that's not even the concern right now. I, these guys can play football, they're here, right? So, but it's about learning these people. It's about them learning me, learning DJ. You know, talking about, like, I, my wife, Maggie, this, none of this is possible without her. And I have six wonderful kids I can't wait to see this weekend. Uh, but I want them to know about my family. You know, they can't be family if they don't feel comfortable coming over to my house or if I'm not bringing my family around them. Because when we build that, then we're going to be able to get into the football. Then we have trust. Then we have belief. And then we can really, you know, we can magnify what these guys do. And I think that's what you saw again in the 2019 season is that there was great trust, commitment, and belief. And that's something that, you know, obviously this last year, there were a lot of challenges. There were challenges for us in Carolina this year. And it was an exceptional example to see how Joe Brady ran an offense in a pandemic, how Matt Rule as a head coach did an elite job organizing his people. I was on the phone with him last night thanking him, like just the way that he led, that Joe led, have really helped prepare me for this situation. And, and the other people, like I'm working with Sean McVay as a first time play caller, seeing how Sean handled the situation, seeing how it is about getting your staff organized, learning your players, and then delving in what they do well. And then Todd Downing in Oakland, I thought there were some things he really did good as an, from an organizational standpoint that I'm emulating here. Scott Turner is the other one. And, and something too, like a great influence on me, you talk about first time play callers, but then Norm Chow, you know, Norv Turner, Jay Gruden, some of the elite play callers, I think, in the game. Uh, and that's why I feel very blessed to be in the position I'm in. And a big part of it, like Mike Loxley at uh, Alabama uh, was an elite play caller. And, you know, being around these people have allowed me to achieve to the level. And I'm excited about the opportunity and showing that what these people invested me uh, invested in me was very well invested. Hey, Jay, Brooks Kavina from The Advocate uh, here in town. Um, you talked about scheme and all the things that you've learned over these years. You know, once it gets into the game, you know, with in-game adjustments, strategy there, how do you approach that? Do you consider that a strength, and how do you organize that with the staff while you're up there in the booth? Yeah, I'll tell you, hey, Brooks, are you the one that called every single person that I've ever talked to about football in my past? I. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. I had text messages from people I hadn't even heard from in years, so I applaud you for, uh, for your work ethic. Uh, but anyway, that's a great question, Brooks. Uh, that's where you rely on the strength of the staff and Coach Ogeron as well. We, we've been through a lot of things situationally. All of us have been different places and learned from different people, and that's where when we communicate, communication is the critical element of everything, right? So as we communicate with each other, we prepare ourselves. Coach Ogeron, when I interviewed up here, there's, there's a part of our organization where we spend time preparing, studying, communicating these special situations. And that's something that I do feel like we can draw an edge from. But just dealing with, and again, when it's all about we, not me, we draw on everybody's expertise, which is gonna allow us to achieve in those situations because we'll be able to prepare ourselves and our players for when those things happen. Hey, Jake Wilson, Alexander, also from The Advocate. Pleasure to be speaking with you. Thanks, Wilson. I said a minute ago that, you know, it's an interesting, you know, sort of situation you will have at quarterback. What have you learned about those guys over the last few days? And, 
Um, although you haven't been able to actually practice with them, how would you spur and evaluate them as players? I'll tell you what, we have some exceptional young men. And getting a chance to talk with these guys and getting a chance to talk with their, uh, most of their parents at this point as well, you can see it's by no accident. These are really good young men that are obviously very talented, but they're good young men that I'm excited to work with and help grow them not only as players but as people. And we have great skill sets in there. I wouldn't say any of them are the same, which is good, right? I mean, that's a good thing where we can draw different things. We can attack defenses in a different way. But it's been a pleasure to get to know these guys, and I look forward to continuing to grow that. Hey, Jake. Uh, this is Glenn West with LSU Country here. Um, you mentioned hi, Glenn. A few minutes ago, yeah, yeah, hi. Uh, you mentioned a few minutes ago that obviously you uh, uh, spent some time with Joe Brady last year. I mean, I'm just curious, what was one thing that maybe you learned from him above all else that kind of helped you in your, you know, your first year here? And then just also, what are your first impressions of some of these players? I know you visit very early, but I mean, just – what kind of guys do you think you have on this, on this team? Sure. Well, I'll tell you what. Joe Brady uh, and DJ spent a lot more time with him, right? Like They played college football together, and, and they've grown up pro, um, together. Uh, for me, Joe Brady, I've spent more time with him than any human being, including my wife, uh, this last year. So, like, he's a guy that I love not only as a football coach, but even more as a friend. Like, this is a guy that uh, means a lot to me personally as well as professionally. I wouldn't be here without him. And he invested a lot in me this last year. And I tried to learn from every opportunity I got from him and then add, and hopefully he felt like he grew from his experiences with me as well. What Joe has, he has such grace with how he delivers his thoughts. Joe is, and you guys, I'm assuming most of you guys were around for the 19th season and got an opportunity to speak with him. But he's, he's elite with intelligence. But the way that he communicates, and not just with me, I was his quarterback coach, but with the players. And he helped me to make some things a little more simple. You know, like we helped shape each other's thoughts, but there were times where I thought he helped me take it from uh, advanced math to, to maybe Algebra 1, which in learning these systems, it's not about what I know, it's about what these guys know. It's not about what we know, it's what they can learn and retain and play fast with. And then you asked uh, Glenn about our team. What I'm seeing is great excitement from these guys. Like Coach O brought up, we have this offensive line back. And this was big. We talked about the roster a lot when I came up here last week. We have competitive kids. We have guys that are hungry. You, you don't come to LSU unless you want to compete. But we have skill positions that can stretch the field. We have running backs that can run the ball and catch the ball out of the backfield and stretch it. And we have guys that just want to compete. That's the thing that's been over and over meeting with these guys. They want an opportunity to compete, and they want to get better. Hi, Jake. This is Ed Daniels from Hi, Ed. the UBC Community in New Orleans. How are you, sir? Doing great, thank you. Great. Uh, question. You have really some contrasting styles in the quarterback room. You have a couple mm -hmm. guys who are, who are primarily pocket passes, and then you have Max, who is a, um, a, a little more of a, of a run-pass guy. H how will you reconcile that in, in how you get the offense you know, prepared because you, you've got two different quarterback styles in that room. Sure, and Ed, I appreciate that assessment, and I think that you're right in some of that. I do feel like all these guys can play in any style of offense that we want them to play in. Like, Max is a guy that you're right, he can move, and he has some mobility to him, but if you look at his calmness and his footwork in the pocket, like, this guy can play pro-style football now. Like, this guy can play in the pocket, he can sling it, we can do some different things moving it, and I would say the same thing for uh, Brennan, he, he can move the pocket. He has very good balance. He's a guy that can sling it well, really like his lower half. And then you have TJ. TJ's a big man now. Like we were, we were talking earlier today, seeing him the first time reminded me a lot of when I first came to Carolina and seeing Cam Newton. I mean, these are big men. He is extremely talented. He's a guy that can flick the wrist and the ball blows up off of it. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, I think that you may not categorize him as a guy that can run and escape the pocket, but there are great examples on film where he's able to move up and over. And the thing about TJ is when he escapes, he can attack you at every level of the field. I mean, he's like Steph Curry hitting threes from the parking lot with where he can reach you with his arm. And then we have Garrett Nussmeyer. You know, Garrett is, you know, tore up 6A football in the state of Texas. He's a guy that is extremely competitive, just like all these guys are extremely competitive. But he's a guy that I'm excited to see how he can move out of the pocket, in the pocket. All these kids, there's not a limiting factor to their game saying, well, we can't play this style of football. 
But either way, whoever the quarterback is and whenever it is that they play, we're going to play to their strengths. Do we have time for uh, one more question for Coach Amos? Yeah, Coach Amos Morale from WWL Radio in New Orleans. Uh, hey, Amos. You spent most of your, you spent most of your career uh, in the pros. Uh, I'm just curious as to what about this job kind of made you want to make the move to college football? That's a great question. This is not something I had a couple of my close friends, they hit me up and they said, is this true? You know, like I, I did. Most of my career has been in the NFL. I've spent a couple of years at Alabama. I was here at UCLA. And um, as Brooks knows, because he got a hold of the head coach I worked for there, I was at Santa Barbara City College. Uh, but here's the thing. It's LSU. Like you look at the players that you that you get to work with here. Most of these guys, I mean, well, all of these guys that are walking into my office and introduce themselves. They all look like they're in the NFL. They look like the same guys I was with at Carolina or anywhere else. But the thing that really drew me here, you know, Joe talking to me about it and his great experience that he had here and that the people that are here, it was a difficult decision. I love working for Matt Rule. You know, Mr. David Tepper is an outstanding owner with the Carolina Panthers. And I love working for Joe Brady there. My wife and kids, we love it in Charlotte. We would not have left if it wasn't a unique opportunity here. And Coach Ogeron coached uh, one of my wife's brothers, actually, at Ole Miss. And so when it first got brought up, I don't know, maybe a week ago when my days are running together, but I brought it up to my wife. You know, we're, we're a team. My, my, my wife, I'll tell you what, when you're raising six kids, it's the most competitive team sport there is. And if you guys can manufacture a situation that's more hairy than bath time with six kids, I think we'll be able to handle fourth and goal. Uh, but if she didn't, sign off on it, I wouldn't have taken, I wouldn't take any job. And for her, her brother George, who is a, a special, the special teams coordinator at Maryland for Mike Loxley, who I worked with at Alabama, he loves Coach O. He always spoke about Coach O. My wife has loved her experiences with Coach O. When I came up here, I felt that. And I know that this is a special place. And like I talked about the power of the staff, we have great position coaches. We have great analysts. Any of these guys could be up for any of these jobs. You know what I'm saying? And that's part of my job is to help develop these people as uh, men and coaches as well, and we'll develop each other. But had it not been such a special place like LSU with Coach Ogeron and all those people I talked about, as well as having great players, you know, th this wouldn't have been something that I would have entertained. But we're very excited to be coming down here, and my family will be here as soon as we possibly can get them here. Appreciate it, Jake. Thanks for your time. You bet. Thank you. Appreciate you all.